I have been building Next.js apps for the past two or three years at this point, and I've always defaulted to using server actions for everything. At first, I loved them. For every single app I used, server actions were the default data fetching, data mutation logic I would use for all of my applications. But just recently, in my most recent app that I'm building, I decided I no longer wanted to use server actions, and I ripped it out completely and replaced it with something completely different instead. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through a little bit about my history with server actions, why I loved it, and some of the reasons why I kind of fell out of love with it over time. And and then I'm going to talk about what I ended up switching to in the end. So first, just for a little bit of context, I really loved server actions when they first came out. You remember, I don't know if you guys were around like the tech YouTube back then, but back when server actions first came out with Next.js 13, everybody was like, oh my God, server actions are changing the game. Server components, React server components, so amazing. And at first, I really loved that as well. I was able to do all of my data fetching, didn't have to write a single API endpoint. That was honestly the biggest thing that was the biggest appeal for me, never having to write another API endpoint again, handle everything via data fetching on the server or creating a server action to do any client side mutations as well. And you can write it all out, no API endpoint necessary. So beautiful, incredible developer experience in theory. And while I was a really big champion for server actions myself in the early apps that I built, I've begun to fall out of love with server actions for a couple of reasons. I'm also gonna preface this video saying, I'm sure 100% this is a skill issue. I will fully acknowledge I'm not the best developer out there. I'm not a Next.js expert. I'm not a server action expert. I'm not a coding expert by any means. I'm just a guy that loves to build apps and I'm all about building apps quickly and launching them as soon as possible and trying to turn them into a money-making business. That's what I'm doing this for. I'm definitely much more of a product engineer than a very deep technical engineer. So yes, this is a skill issue problem. I'm going to own up to that right now. But I also think that this is a very telling thing as well, because while I'm definitely not a god tier crazy crack engineer, I'm definitely not a bad engineer either. I know my way around code bases. I can code pretty well. And I think that a lot of the issues that I ran into with Next.js and server actions is something that can theoretically be fixed through a lot of different optimizations here and there but because it wasn't the default behavior of the framework this is where the shortcomings fell short for me and I'm sure if I run into these issues then a lot of other developers are gonna run into these issues as well so my first biggest issue with server actions is the fact that they're not great if you're building a multi-app experience if you're building just a singular siloed next.js application amazing it is so inconvenient to do this because you never have to write an API endpoint but I think over the years as I've built more and more apps I found myself actually creating initially a next.js application but sometimes I would create a second website, like a dedicated admin page to manage certain parts of my app separately on a separate web application. And in that case, it becomes a little bit more cumbersome to share that API endpoint logic. Or another example where I would need to have shared logic between Next.js application and something else is if I were to build a mobile app companion for a web app that I would build. And in this scenario, I would have to do either two things. Number one is to refactor my Next.js application to handle all the data fetching and data mutation on the client side via an API endpoint that I create instead. So I can just share that logic with this mobile app companion that I built, or I would keep the Next.js component as is, and then just create a separate dedicated API endpoint that had duplicate logic that the Next.js endpoint had so that I can link my mobile application into this API endpoint. So it just felt a little redundant at times. So more and more, I found myself being like, well, I seem to be falling into a trend, maybe because I built a lot of consumer apps in the past where I would build a lot of apps that were never strictly just Next.js. And as a result, I would always have to just end up creating an API endpoint to share that endpoint with another application that I was trying to hit it. So that became a little bit annoying. Now, another annoying thing with server actions, it just felt like there were a lot of like, oh, if you know, you know, it's like a lot of gotchas that you had to learn uh, through building a lot of apps to get the ideal experience. A really great example of this is the redirect function within Next.js. The redirect function does exactly what you think it'll do. You call the redirect function, you pass in a URL and it'll redirect you to that URL. And you would typically call this on like a mutation within a server action. If you are, you know, trying to create a new entity and then after you successfully create a new entity, Entity, it'll then redirect you to that page. So just to give you a more concrete example of this kind of issue that I ran into with Next.js and wanting to create shared logic between an admin app and the actual consumer application as well, I'm going to show you a real example of this issue with this app that I'm building right now. It's called Yorbi and it is a social media marketing tool. It's a social media marketing tool that covers two main scenarios. Number one is helping you hire creators, which we do as a service for you. We reach out to creators one-on-one -on -one and find the best creator matches for you. And you only have to pay if we successfully hire a creator for you. And then the second big feature that we have is this viral content database. Essentially, we rot our brains on social media and we have a gigantic repository of viral pieces of marketing content specifically that are going viral on social media so that you can get marketing inspiration to figure out and learn how to market your product on social media. So I have my actual consumer application right here. So this is like the free tier. You see uh, these examples of a viral content database. And then within the admin portal, you can see we have our admin portal of our entire viral content database just so that we can modify things here 
in there, change the niche, change the format, change the account type, the brand, yada, 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 whatever you want, add new content into the database. Now, this is a prime example of the exact same logic of fetching the various viral content entries in two different applications. And originally, when I was building out this consumer side portal for it first, I built it out with a server action to do all the data fetching, and it was kind of annoying. And originally, when I built out this feature, I built it out on the actual consumer application first, and I handled all the data fetching via just the React server component to fetch all the data right then and there, do all the data querying directly in that server component. But then the time came around for me to create this admin portal, and I was like, okay, this is kind of annoying. I don't want to duplicate code. So then as part of this whole migration process, I had to have duplicate code across both my admin portal as well as my consumer app portal. So that was a little annoying just to have duplicate code logic, like the exact data fetching code logic across these two applications, even though they were exactly the same. Another thing that I didn't feel like was a great developer experience was the usage of revalidate path within Next.js. Essentially, revalidate path does exactly what you think it does. It revalidates a path so that it fetches a brand new set of data. So kind of going back to that viral content database example, some common usage for revalidate path would be when I add a new piece of content, I then want to call revalidate path to refetch the entire list of viral content so that the new content entry comes up to the very top. Now this works, don't get me wrong, but sometimes this felt really sluggish because because on a page, let's say you have a ton of data you're fetching from the server side. When you call revalidate path, you're fetching all of the data on that entire page. So that's a lot of data you might unnecessarily be refetching. Now, I understand that there is the concept of caching via tags and revalidating tags directly within Next.js to do more granular path and data revalidation. But once again, this just didn't feel like the default behavior. This felt like, a, oh, you got to dive a little bit deeper into the documentation to learn that this exists, and then you can do the caching by tag and revalidating by tag. It felt like the most straightforward behavior within Next.js server components cache invalidation is just fetching data on the page and then revalidating that page's individual path. So it just felt like the default behavior was kind of wrong and it led to a slower developer experience and performance is actually the biggest issue that I ran into with server actions with data fetching as well as data mutation. Once again, I realized this is a skill issue. I'm sure there are ways to optimize it, but once again, it just didn't feel like really high performance applications was the default. It seems to be like a, you got to do some more searching and add these optimizations in yourself, which I don't think is great. I feel like that performance aspect of it should be a really first class citizen in the developer experience. So for me, maybe because I build a lot of pages that have a lot of client interactions, but by having all the data mutations and data fetching via server actions and server components, it felt really slow and sluggish. Once again, going back to my app Yorbi, in the viral content database, you can click on it to view more details about that individual piece of content. An example of performance issues I ran into within Yorbi when I first implemented this with server components primarily is this. So within this viral content database, you can click on one of these pieces of content, you see the entire video, you get the metrics, you can view it directly on TikTok so you can get that like direct content inspiration right there, right? You can also share this link to somebody else so that when somebody clicks on this link and they also have access to the viral content database, it loads everything. But I felt like when everything was done via server data to fetching and server side everything, it was just so slow. Like right now you can see that there's a nice loading animation because we fetch each thing asynchronously right there. And for some reason, like this nice user interaction where I can click on a video and then it pulls in from the side sheet, this is so snappy because I'm not doing this via server side components and server side data fetching. Once again, skill issue, but a real problem that I did run into. It felt really slow doing this specific interaction. I just had a really hard time getting the performance to where I wanted it to be. Here's a real life use case on when you would call this redirect function within a server action. So coming back to our viral content database, let's say I wanted to add a new piece of viral content and then I save it. And then in this scenario, I would want some logic such that once it's successfully saved, it redirects me to a different page to focus in so I can view that individual piece of content and essentially open up a page like this so I can focus in on it and see it right then and there. So that is a scenario where you would use this redirect function call within Next.js. But one of the big gotchas of the redirect function call is the fact that you can't call it directly within a try catch loop because the way that the redirect call works is that it throws a custom error that Next.js will then catch and then redirect you over to whatever page you want to redirect to. That's really annoying. I don't know why that's the case. And it just didn't really feel like a great developer experience. One of the biggest performance issues I also found within Next.js is navigating between different pages. When I would go from page A to page B, there would be no default loading animation built in. So there was a lot of times where I would click on a button to navigate to another page and then I would just be stuck there for a couple of seconds while the data was being fetched for page B. And it felt like nothing was happening.
happening because there's no loading animation going on. And I also know that Next.js does have the option where you can add in a loading.tsx file to have a default loading animation when you're doing some data fetching for a particular page or path. But even in that scenario, it just felt so unbelievably slow. I don't know why, but whenever I did a lot of data fetching on the server side to navigate to another component, this is just the biggest, biggest issue. I would have so many complaints from both my co-founder, who's he's non-technical, he's like the business side, marketing side of things, as well as my users when they would use my application, they'd be like, the app just freezes when I try to go to a different page that does a lot of data fetching on the server side. And then because of all these issues, I ended up having to migrate away from server components and just doing a lot of client side data fetching. And for some reason, I just feel like the big push of React and Next.js into the server component realm, it made me feel like if you end up having to default to using a client side a data fetching or a client component, it was bad. It felt like because they were shoving server components down our throats, I was like, oh, I should never do client components. Client components is bad. This is, I should avoid this at all costs. But then time and time again, I'm like, maybe client components and client side data fetching is actually really good and I should do more of it. And I did find myself to have better performance defaulting and migrating over to doing more client side data fetching. And then once I started migrating over to client side data fetching, because I wanted to stay really deep in the Next.js and Vercel ecosystem, just because I was like a diehard fan, like, woo, Next.js, woo, Vercel. I tried to use the use SWR library at first, but this is a little annoying because then I still had to create an API endpoint and I didn't really get that end-to-end -end type safety that I really wanted. And then as a result, I ended up moving over to TRPC and oh my God, it has been an amazing, amazing developer experience. I would say it is the best developer experience for TypeScript developers out there. And by migrating everything over into TRPC, TRPC, I feel like it has solved a lot of the issues that I originally had. It's much easier to create a common TRPC set of procedures that I can share between different TypeScript applications. I mean, just look at this TRPC procedures file. It's just really satisfying and just so much more well organized than any server action or API endpoint possibly could be. I just have this viral content router, which is just like the home router that contains all the logic and all the procedures related to anything about this viral content database that I'm building out. You just define the name of what your procedure is, and then you add the input structure and you have the entire logic planned out inside of it. And then you just rinse and repeat this just for every single new procedure that you want. And then you also have the ability to create these middleware procedures. For example, this admin procedure right here, there's middleware checking involved to make sure that the user can only execute this mutation if we validate that they are an admin user. So convenient, so beautiful, love CRPC, great developer experience. Also, I've gotten a lot of questions in the comments about what tool I'm using right here that has my code showing right here, as well as this chat panel that I use for some agented coding. And this app is called Warp. They originally launched back in 2021 as a new terminal, but now they've actually leaned in super heavily into becoming an agentic developer experience, where instead of a traditional IDE where the code is the main star of the show, this time the agentic conversation is the main focus. I use them pretty regularly as part of my agentic coding workflow because they have a lot of great features. They also have really Really nice like lightweight built-in file viewing experience file editing experience that you see right here they launched a brand new planning feature where when you activate this plan mode and you want to build out a brand new feature for example i'm building out this brand new chat feature inside of your where i can save conversation history inside of my app so that's the whole conversation i had with the ai agent right here when the agent creates a plan you can actually open it up in this dedicated notebook right here to have a better viewing and reading experience and then inside of this new plan mode view and plan mode notebook you can actually go in make changes changes to the plan yourself edit it, update it wherever you want, just to make sure your AI model gets the best plan for it to execute on its own. My personal favorite new feature that they launched is this brand new code review tool. So whenever the agent goes off and makes any code changes, you have to go out and review the code and see what's going on there. And then now when you're doing a code review, it feels like the exact same type of UI you would do a code review in within GitHub. So for example, you can do a comment on this line, add a review there, leave this comment, and you can just do basically like batch code reviews all over leave all these little comments like a typical GitHub code review, and then just press send to agent and then the agent will then batch process all these code review changes for you. This just makes so much sense. I can't believe that this wasn't a thing before. This is so good. I've been using Warp since 2021, so I'm a big fan of the product and that's why I'm really happy to say that Warp is the sponsor of today's video. And Warp is free to try. You can check it out at the link in the description. And once again, thanks again to the Warp team for sponsoring this section of this video. That solves a good problem. Because all the data fetching is happening on the client, it feels a lot more performant compared to the server-side data fetching and server-side mutations. Another good 
good problem solved. The developer experience has been phenomenal because I get end-to-end -end type safety whenever I change the output of a particular TRPC procedure. Immediately, TypeScript goes crazy being like, you need to fix this, like this is broken, that's broken, you need to fix this immediately. I'm a really big fan of TRPC and also I want to note that this is not just isolated experience that I ran into as well with server actions and server components. I actually have a friend of mine, he's building his own startup as well. He too started off by creating everything at Next.js and server actions and server components, but he ran into the same major performance issues that I did. But instead of going down the TRPC route, he went down the GraphQL route instead, which I think both GraphQL and TRPC are very similar, but I think TRPC is a little bit more lightweight. It has a lot less code gen compared to the GraphQL generating new schemas. But either way, we are both significantly happier migrating away from server actions and server components into just going deep into the GraphQL and the TRPC route. And if I were to do things all over again, like if I were to rebuild a brand new application, I would honestly look into the TanStack start framework. If you're not familiar with what TanStack is, essentially, I personally got introduced to it through TypeScript because through TypeScript, if you go and try to implement it into your application, they have their currently recommended implementation strategy is by using the TanStack React query. It is essentially a querying framework that is very great for handling a lot of data invalidation, data mutation work, and TRPC is built on top of it. And then I'm having such a great developer experience with the TanStack TRPC implementation. And then I started to poking around a little bit more into the tan stack start implementation and the framework as well and it looks pretty sick and it does have server side components help as well but it also has a really great client side data fetching experience as well so honestly if i were to redo this whole app building process again the next framework i would want to play around with honestly it might be tan stack start but it's still really early i don't know how production ready it is yet i think it's in the early stages of development getting close to that ga launch so maybe i wouldn't go into the whole tan stack start realm but either way if i go build out another application again with next JS, which I still do like as a framework, I would definitely avoid the whole server component, server side data fetching stuff. And instead, I'd probably default into using TRPC for everything because I think the TRPC developer experience has been incredibly great. I've really, really loved it. Highly recommend it. I know Theo.gg on YouTube, he's been a big proponent of it. I too am a big proponent of it as well. So definitely check it out. I think it's pretty great. That's all I have for today's video. And as a reward for watching all the way to the end, I know I showcased a lot of the tool Yorbi that I'm building, like the social media marketing tool. And if you are interested in checking it out, I'll include a coupon code right here that you can use to get a little bit of a discount on your first purchase to Yorbi if you want to get some social media marketing inspiration for your business that you're trying to market on social media. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you liked it. Leave any questions or comments in the comment section down below. I'll try my best to answer every single one of them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.